What is up, guys? I'm gonna make a quick video here. I'm just gonna do this live. So I don't have to edit, but getting ready to go to bed because I spent hours on this dang thing. But uh, here's my last generation of circuit boards. And let's see, I might have an, another blank up here to show you what it looks like without any solder on it. But uh, I just get these made after I design them and then they're sent to me. It's like three boards for 50 bucks, which ain't too bad. And it's actually three boards this size. So what I like to do is if I, now that I'm condensing my circuit boards down to mostly surface mount parts, uh, except for maybe some resistors and switches, but I'm able to condense it down. So that was what I used last time. Now I used to use this size, regular full size P-dip. So it's a 20 pin little microprocessor. But these right here are the same exact chip, except for look how much smaller they are. I tell you, that is real fun to solder by hand, and my eyes are going to crap now that I'm 49 years old. So I've pretty much been wearing um, these things to do anything on there. And I even have to flip down the second little magnifying glass. It was actually earlier than I expected. I thought they were coming next Monday, so that's nice. I got them today. And what I do is I make I get three boards for 50 bucks, which with my layout, it actually turns into six boards. And I just use it for my projects. And I just cut it in half of the Dremel, which I did here, which you could see with this. Um, was cut in half. So what I do. So here's my last generation one, but I screwed it up. <laughs> I don't know how in my in a little CAD software, but uh, these little 12 pin and six pin Molex plugs, whatever you want to call them, they're not Molexes, but the little, you know, where I plug my cables in. Somehow I didn't notice, I don't know how I didn't notice, but it's probably because it was my first time going to surface mount. I didn't realize, you know, these huge ass holes <laughs> uh, in the design were way too large for these. So I got these boards that came in like this. And look how ridiculously huge those are. They're supposed to be like this. So I can lay in you know, these little 12 pin and six pin um, connectors on the harness connectors. So that's one reason I wanted to update it because that was ridiculous. And I was just soldering wires onto it like that and like that. But I've already got several of my LCDs made up on the 12 pin here so where when that's hooked up right I could just plug it in and take the same LCD for my projects. Sometimes I use the LCD just for um, setting up my circuit and then once I get my circuit's installed into something I might not need an LCD it might just be doing something you know and once I have it all working and I don't need the LCD to see what all my values are then I can just unplug it and the LCD gets used on something else. So that was why I like doing that. So anyway so that was the last design. So I soldered up this one right here. I put on my little, my, uh, oh, and that's the other thing I did. When I designed this last one, see how small that is. That's a 20 pin chip right there, which is that chip right there. But then up here for the voltage regulator, I accidentally also designed it with SSOP size. When actually that was actually too small. That chip is a little bigger than that. So this is actually the correct size for the voltage regulator you can see how small these come on focus see how small that is up there and then that's right here so there's a little voltage regulator i mean it's a little suck tiny sucker right there but it's not as it's not as small a pin pitch as this is so that's a 20 pin chip look how small it is compared to my fingertip and then that's a voltage regulator so i got that all sized right got these sized but when i first soldered this up at first, I did the voltage regulator, which is a buck inverter, or whatever you want to call it, chip, uh, diode, which is that little tiny surface mount one down there, and then uh, this uh, coil, and then the two capacitors, and that's all you take, you know, to make the, the 5 volts, down from 12, up to anything up to 30 volts I can put into this stuff, there would be no problem, it won't even get hot, and it regulates perfect 5 volts. And then I put my chip on there, and man, this thing just was glitching, and it's tried to, and it just wasn't programming right. And anyway, then I soldered on another one. I'm like, I just screwed up someone there. So at this point, I just soldered on. Actually, back up. I used the other half of that blown board. I soldered on the the chip, which is fun. I have to use a magnifying glass and be real careful with this fine point tip right there. It's like a needle almost. And I just I pre-tin these traces on the board. 
and then I lay the chip just perfect and I tack one corner, get it on item, and just touch it. That little needle sized soldering iron on each one of those. You can see, look, my fingertip is way wider than all 10 pins. So it's a, well, this Samsung's not wanting to focus. So that's fun. So I did that one and it still was glitchy trying to program it. It would see the chip for a second and then it would glitch. So I did it one more time. So I soldered the chip on there. Um, I didn't get to see what that comment was. I guess it just deleted it. Anyway, yeah. Uh, so I soldered that one on there and still got itches. Anyway, here's this whole story is all about. And now I'm tired, but this is the harness I made a while back and I've been using it. It goes from this uh, microprocessor little developer board, or you know, it's not a developer board, it doesn't, it doesn't do it. It's just for programming the chips and it was something I bought. I have two of them. And uh, you can put a lot of chips right in here, which is a full size chips, but then you can use in circuit serial pr programming, which is this harness, right? How you like I'm just handling that with my hands. And that's what this cable goes to, and it goes into here, and that's for programming this. I can actually program this while it's all powered up, and it generally usually will work. I have the little diode to keep voltage from here from actually shooting back into there, but it generally works. But this is the cable I've been using for that, and something's wrong with it. But I started trying to program some of my older boards, and I was still getting, I was start, I noticed I was getting errors on those too. And I'm like, wait a minute, I've already programmed these. So I just made that new harness right here. Dang, the thing finally works. So I probably should just chuck this, although I might need the connectors again. But I have to remember that's bad. <laughs> I should probably cut it. <laughs> then I won't use it again. So, and I have my little uh, resistor bridge thing on there. And I just, I don't have the button soldered in yet, but they're stabbed in there. So it seems to be working. So I can change my duty cycle. And this is just like, like this board right here. Like it's just, you know, it has my program in there where I make a pulse width modulated output. I can change the duty cycle. I could go to and change the speed. There's four kilohertz, but I could speed that up. This thing's not wanting to focus for crap tonight. Slow it down, whatever. So four kilohertz is usually a pretty good starting point for some stuff. And I like it uh, using it because I'll just throw that into a, some, to drive some MOSFETs and try to find the sweet spot on these little toroid transformers that I wind up and stuff, trying to make switching power supplies, which I'm still, you know, screwing around with this thing. The other day I had a, this big ass microwave transformer using the, the 120 volt side in, um, pulse it with 12 volts and then the high voltage output side going up to step up and rectify to try to power up that VFD. And it kind of did, but I noticed when I went to 24 volts, it powered it up pretty quick. I actually uh, unloaded this thing was making like five, 600 volts out of 24 volt input. Um, so I was pretty, whenever I take the load off, it was like kind of worry of blowing up some capacitors in my face. Let's see, <laughs> got a bunch of poop emojis or something there. I can't tell my eyes are so tired. <laughs> so, uh, but it's still not enough current to keep that motor running. Although at 24 volts, you get. He's commenting on your video. Who is? That wait, is that you? <laughs> Why? That's not your username. That's you my other account. <laughs> you get off of there right now for not seen you're in trouble. Your videos before. Yeah. Okay, go. You're probably not dressed right. So that thing there. Um, I, was, okay. I got that thing ramped up to like a uh, 60 hertz or whatever, almost off of off of that little step up thing off of 24 volts to run that three phase motor. And, uh, but I still don't have enough current, so I gotta try to modify that tr that transformer or try something else. But I don't know why I'm even doing that, but I just want to see a three phase motor work off of like a handheld battery. And uh, can you be in here when you're not fully dressed like that? And that is live. So uh, anyway, there's so many projects that are started and not finished in here. It's ridiculous. I still need to do the laser perimeter thing out in my yard for the uh, security system. I haven't finished that yet, so. Anyway, he had a bunch of live. I didn't know who that was putting all the poopy emojis, but now I know it was the daughter. She shouldn't be watching my videos this late. She should be in bed. So, all right, time to shut down, soldering iron off, scope off. The main thing is turning that off. Oh, stick it steaming off for a while. Yeah, so. And then turn this off. At a stopping point, it's almost 11 o'clock, so yeah, I gotta kill it, man. <laughs> it looks like she's posted on here again, so.
catch you guys later. Just a little update on something I made. And it was just kind of cool to get this circuit board. So the all three of these did take a program once I've got this cable. I made that new cable. All three of these chips are at least wired enough to communicate and get programmed. And then this board's actually up and running. So that's cool. So got to hook up some more stuff. And I think the pulse width, yeah, this time the wire here, I should be able to like run a wire right out with this nice harness. And it's going to go to feed the MOSFETs or whatever I want to do with the circuit boards. Hey, what's up, Richie? <laughs> but uh, so, yeah, put this back over right here and call it a night. But yeah, my eyes. I wish I would have, you know, went to surface mount when I was like 10 years younger where I could just see that stuff, but I'm going to get a close up before I kill the video. I mean, that, like I said, there's, the, there's my fingertip. There's my fingernail. Sorry there, guys. So that chip's like half, half of a finger wide, you know, where the, the same chip, you know, is like a couple fingers. So these are like a quarter scale. And you got about uh, almost four, about three pins next to each other for every one, for every, you know, between the other two of the other pins. So it's pretty hard to solder those, but I do. <laughs> Get out of here with that. So. All right, I'll kill.